The first thing that we're going to do is install some software on your personal computer. We're going to be installing two different pieces of software for this course and for this textbook. We're going to be installing Microsoft's Visual Studio Code, and I'll probably just refer to this as VS Code, and another program that's called Pandoc. Installing software is usually a pretty straightforward thing for you to do. And the very first thing that you need to do when you're installing software is to download the software from a web page or an application store. So first things first, let's open up our web browser. The very first thing that I want to do when I am installing some software, and in this case, really specifically Visual Studio Code, is to go to the web page that has Visual Studio Code. A lot of times you're going to find this by doing web searches for something like VS Code, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what the address is to go to. So up here in the address bar for your web browser, you might be using something like Google Chrome or you might be using uh, Mozilla Firefox. Here I'm using Microsoft Edge. This is just what comes with Windows, and so that's what I'm using. The address that we want to type in here is code.microsoft, uh, I'm sorry, code.visualstudio.com. Once you get here, uh, you can pretty quickly see this download for Windows button right here. If you're using something like Mac OS or Linux, um, you might see a different button here that will say download for Mac OS or download for uh, downloaded.deb file or downloaded.rpm file for Linux. You can also click on this download button up here and you can have see that there's a variety of different options that you can, uh, that you can use to download. I'm going to just click on this download for Windows 10 comma 11 button. If you're using Mac OS, you should probably just click on this button and it will download an image file for you. And if you're downloading uh, for a Linux distribution, if you're using Debian or Ubuntu, you can pick up this .deb file. Or if you're using something like Red Hat, Fedora or SUSE, you can use .rpm. But for Windows, I'm going to click on download for Windows 10 comma 11. This is going to get started. And I'm going to do a quick cut here because it's going to take a little bit of time for me to, to download this file. All right, so now the file is downloaded. We have two options. We can click on this open file button or we can open our file explorer and go to our downloads folder. On Windows, the downloads folder is generally where downloads are going to appear. On Mac OS, the same kind of thing is going to happen. You can open up Finder and find your downloads folder. On Linux, again, if you're using something like um, Google Chrome or uh, Mozilla Firefox, it will also go to the downloads folder that you have for your user directory. I'm going to double click on this and it's going to start up the installer. And this is going to walk me through um, installing this. This prompt is OK. Um, on Windows, it's asking us if it's okay for us to install software for all users on the system. You may or may not see this dialog box appear on your Windows machine as you're going through the install process. On Mac OS, you're dragging things to the applications folder and you may or may not have to uh, type in your password to do that. On Linux, when you're installing software, you will generally have to type in your password to do that. So I'm gonna click on okay. I'm going to accept this license agreement without reading it because uh, most people just don't read these license agreements and they are miles long. Um, I'm going to click next here. I'm happy for this to install into my user directory as opposed to um, for the whole system. I want this to make something in the start menu so that I can very quickly start this up. Uh, I'm also going to choose create a desktop icon so that it shows up on my desktop. This add open to code uh, action to Windows Explorer file context menu and add open with code to Windows Explorer directory context menu. These two options are going to make it so that when you right click with your mouse on a file or a folder in Windows Explorer, you can then open it directly with, with VS Code without having to um, do any additional stuff. I'm gonna leave these unchecked for now. I do want to register code as an editor for supported file types. So this option here is saying, that I want to open, for example, uh, source code for programs or um, plain text files, which is what ultimately we're, we're going to get to using um, VS Code. I also want to add this to the path. We're going to talk about the path a lot later in this course. This is something that has to do with the command line. Um, so th that's as far as I'm going to talk about that for now, other than to say we're, we're going to talk about this later in the course. So I'm going to click Next, and then I'm going to click Install. And then I will wait patiently for um, VS Code to go through the process of installing onto my system. 
It's pretty fast, doesn't take very long to install VS Code. It's mostly just copying files from one place to another. Okay, awesome. So now I have the option to launch Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna do that. I wanna confirm that this is installed. So I'm gonna click Finish, leave that checked. Most of the time, the way that I'm gonna launch VS Code is by um, clicking on the Start menu or pressing my uh, Windows key. Um, you may on Mac OS want to add this to your dock. On Windows, you can also right click here and pin this to your taskbar. And this will give you really quick access to, to using Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to do any of this getting started with VS Code stuff. You are more than welcome to do that if you want, but I'm just going to close this welcome window right now. The other piece of software that I want us to install in this course is um, called Pandoc. So I'm going to go back to my web browser and to get to Pandoc, the address is pandoc.org. Pandoc is uh, self-described as the universal document converter. And we're going to use this uh, throughout the course. But the main thing that I want you to see right now is that all of the different formats that we have here, um, this is a tool that will allow us to, to move between those different formats, to, to convert files from one format to another. Really specifically, what we're going to be using this for at the beginning is to take markdown formatted files, which we'll talk about in a moment, and convert those to docx formatted files. So to convert them to open up into something like Microsoft Word. I'm gonna go back up to the top of the page. To install Pandoc, I'm gonna click on this installing link at the top. And um, what we're gonna see here is download the latest installer. I'm gonna go back for just one second here. And I wanna point at um, these other sections below. So it's also able to be installed using something called a package manager. We're not going to use package managers for now in this course, but on Windows, you can use a program that's called Chocolatey, and this will give you the ability to quickly install um, software from the command line, which again, we'll also get to that much later in the course. On Mac OS, you can use something called Homebrew, and on Linux, uh, many Linux, Linux distributions will have package managers that are built into them and app stores that will allow you to install software. I'm going to go back up to the top here. I'm going to click on this download the latest installer link. This takes us to a website called GitHub. And GitHub is a popular place for open source software. So software where you can download, see and download the source code. So the instructions that are used to make these programs work. There's a lot of different links here. It depends on what operating system you're using and what kind of computer you're using that says which of these you want to download. If you're using um, a Linux distribution, you're probably going to want to pick one of these two, the deb files. Most of the time, it's going to be an AMD64 version of this um, as opposed to the ARM64 version. If you're using Mac OS on a fairly modern Mac, so you have an M1, M2, M3, or M4 processor, I would strongly recommend that you pick this package, arm64macOS.pkg. This is something that you can double click and, and download um, from, from the GitHub web page. I would not recommend that you pick the .zip, and I wouldn't recommend that you pick these .tar.gz files for um, for Linux. For Windows, we're definitely going to pick this one. This is really the only option that we have for Windows. So I'm going to click on this link and I'm going to download this file. Similar to VS Code, our web browser helpfully pops up that it has downloaded this file. This time I'm just going to click on the open file button here at the top. Uh, here, I'm going to accept the terms in the license agreement. Again, I'm not going to read it. It's going to take way too long to read that. This is called the GNU General Public License. Uh, I invite you to read about the GNU GPL if you want, but uh, it's kind of outside the scope of this course. I'm also going to check this box here, install for all users of this machine. I want everyone to be able to use Pandoc after it's been installed. I'm the only person that's using this Windows install, but I still want to install it this way because it's going to help make my life a little bit easier later going forward. So I'm going to click install. It's going to install pretty quickly. Um, and one of the major differences that you're going to see between Pandoc and VS Code is that there's no checkbox here to say launch Pandoc. P 
Pandoc is a command line tool, and that means that it doesn't have a window that's going to pop up when we are going to be using it a little bit later in the course. So I'm going to click finish here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal. We're going to open up a tool to help us verify that Pandoc has indeed been installed in our machine. So on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the Windows key, and then I'm going to start typing in terminal. There are two different programs that you can see here. There's terminal, and it describes itself as an app, and there's also command prompt. On Windows, you can use either of these. On Mac OS, uh, you can either hit Command and Space on your keyboard to launch the Quick Launcher, or if you go to Finder, you can open the Applications folder, and then within Applications, there's a folder called Utilities, and then there's an app that's called Terminal. If you are using a Linux distribution, usually you can hit the Windows key on your keyboard and then start typing Terminal, and you'll be able to launch it. I'm gonna choose for Windows uh, to use Terminal. Command Prompt will also get you the same sorts of things, but uh, Terminal is a bit more of a modern application to use for, for things like this. So I'm gonna start Terminal. And what we're gonna get here is, uh, I'm gonna refer to this frequently, this is called our prompt. So right now this cursor is blinking and it's happily waiting for me to, uh, to type something in. The thing that I want to type in here is Pandoc, so P-A-N-D-O-C, and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. This is what I want to see right now. I don't want to see anything printed out here that says that Pandoc has not been found or, or that some other kind of error. Pandoc right now is waiting for me to type something into it. So in computer science courses, usually the first exercise that we do is to uh, write uh, something called a hello world program. So print something out really quickly to get a very small program that works in a programming language. So I'd like to do that with uh, Pandoc. So I'm going to type in hello world, exclamation point. I'm going to hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control Z on my keyboard and press enter in Windows. On Mac OS and Linux, you're going to hit Control D on your keyboard to uh, tell Pandoc that you finished typing things in. And this is what I want to see. So I've typed in Hello World here, and what Pandoc has done is transform this into another markup language that's called HTML. So this is saying that this is a paragraph, and this has the contents Hello World inside of it. At this point, uh, we've installed two pieces of software. We've installed VS Code, we've launched VS Code, and we've installed Pandoc. Pandoc being a command line tool that is um, that doesn't have a, a window that pops up. We have to use something called a terminal to interact with it. That's it for installing software.